to the Insomniac Show with Nicolette and Brian. We'll get real deep with you. Educating, inspiring, and solving problems with some of the most inspirational humans on the planet. Buckle up and hey, come on the journey. Ready? I'm excited. All right. Okay, guys. So today is a little bit different. I'm Nicolette, and today Brian and I are here with Chef Joshua Northcutt. He is from Deary Dari. We spoke with Jake, uh, well, which will be last week for you guys when you see this episode. And Chef Joshua is here to cook with us today. So we are going to have a little bit of fun. Brian thinks he can cook a better salad. Or what are we making today? We're making some slaw. Yeah. 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 Broccoli slaw. Oh, I'm totally making it better, whatever we're making today. I don't care what it is. <laughs> you know, has a leg up on you. Pretty crappy. On <laughs> All right. So, okay. So, basically, Jeff, Jeff, Chef, Jeff, Chef, Chef Joshua, can you, <laughs> before we start cooking, can you give us a minute and tell us a little bit about yourself before we uh, jump in? Sure. Yeah, no problem. Um, I'm Chef Joshua Northcutt. You know, I've been... Ooh in the industry for over 20 years. I started at 11 years old. Wow. My first job at a banquet hall, uh, after a couple years worked up to doing the omelet station, and uh, which was a big deal for like a little kid to be making omelets for Looking people coming omelets. in on brunch. I get that flip down, that's right. <laughs> um, I continued to move on in like the catering business. I made a sous chef at 16, and I started running my own crew at 19. Uh, then I got into restaurants and such um a lot of italian background restaurants in the philadelphia area um after school at the art institute of philly i wanted to move back to texas where i was born and just kind of learn some barbecue and i learned a lot of creole cooking down there and cajun cooking nice. so that's a lot of fun i tried to impart all of that in my uh, my food which is uh, more barbecue oriented so my time is to shine coming up soon with the weather I, looking I, nice I, I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, so I know barbecue. Okay, yeah. So what we're making today is a barbecue side. It's a great side for uh, summer months to come. So I'm really excited. All right. Well, let's do it. So why don't you tell us what we what, what ingredients we've got here? We've got cauliflower, broccoli, a pepper. Yes. Cauliflower, broccoli, a red bell pepper, which is going to be like the base of the salad itself. And then we're going to make a little bit of a dressing with some mayonnaise, some vinegar, a little bit of salt and sugar and pepper, which is super basic. And because of your little competitiveness that I'm feeling coming from you guys, we can change the recipe up a little bit because this is just a basic form. So we can add a little bit of onion if we'd like. We can add some dry um, spices like uh, onion powder or garlic powder or maybe paprika, some spicy element. I happen to have a little bit of ghost pepper here. I might like to put into mine. Because we like spice in this house. <laughs> I like spice too. We're a spicy house. Okay. Right. So let's get started on the cauliflower, right? Okay. Do I have to wash cauliflower? <clears throat> yes, we can wash cauliflower. <laughs> Everything really gets on the inside of it. So I like to pull all of these leaves back to where we can kind of see inside the cauliflower like that. Well, it looks like my brain a little empty on the inside. Yeah, and I'm gonna cut <laughs> the big stem off because it's in my way. We're gonna cut it out. No, just off, just so it resembles yours more. So I don't have I don't have a protruding stem, just so it doesn't get in the way of what I'm about to do. They already cut mine for me, so I think I'm good. Perfect. Yeah, nice. we'll just get those leaves out of the way, those green leaves. Ah. Because if you can see here, I can start to see inside mm -hmm. the cauliflower. See all the little stems of the trees, right? Yep. All the tree trunks. Mm -hmm. And then we can wash it that way. We'll, we're going to wash the outside, but we want to wash the inside. We want to get a lot of water in there, try to shake it out. Okay. And, uh, all right. You see, it can actually hold quite a bit inside of it. Okay. Really dirty do, cauliflower, like, actually. When I do whole roasted cauliflower, I pour a lot of my seasonings on the inside, and it just kind of stays in there like a great. Uh, yeah, it's sort of. It was sort of like it actually held it like a bowl when I filled yeah. it from the bottom. Yeah. yeah. All right. I don't know. 
how does it, does cauliflower come out in the dirt or something? Because this is <laughs> sure does. Like most things that are grown, they come out of the dirt. Um, I was, was kind of like how a cabbage. It looks like how a cabbage does from that from that stem. Okay. Reminds me of a potato. A potato. Yeah, and it kind of we can use it almost like a potato. You know, it is sort of starchy, and you can make things like cauliflower rice or mashed cauliflower. Now, what we're going to do is once we have a nice clean head of cauliflower, mm -hmm. I want to cut off. I want to show you how to harvest some steaks from this because we don't need the whole cauliflower. So I'm going to cut these ends off and try to keep a big fat steak from the middle. So I'll bring my. I'm going to watch you first. Hold on. Yeah. My camera down here. Watch so this. That, right. So I kind of know where it starts by looking on the inside. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut this end off. This one off. I kind of have this big fat middle piece that's all connected by that tree trunk. Right, right. That should be in the center. Get, I can get two stakes out of this. Okay. So, like, maybe leave like two, three inches in the middle. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm thinking my knife is not really equipped for. Oh no! My uh, my one fell apart. Oh, as long as you're not cutting a finger off, man, it's all good. <laughs> Let's keep our fingers together. The cauliflower can break. There we go. Yeah, perfect. So what I have here now is just big... two ends, and I have this big guy for the middle. Uh -huh. This this middle guy we're going to put to the side. Okay. And, I, and I'll talk about that later. We'll make some cauliflower steaks. Let me put okay. you over there, Mr. Cauliflower Steak. Yeah. They're a lot of fun. I, I, I am a Texas boy and I love barbecue a lot, but I live in a vegetarian household. Oh, um, we heard about this. I need to figure out how to live life that way, you know? <laughs> oh, man. That's, that's tough food. coming from Texas. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a challenge, but the sides are important too, just as yeah. the meat. So, you know, we got to step it up. All so, right. So, yeah. now you'll see those ends are easily break up. Yep. Into these little nuggets that I mean right here is great if you wanted to blanch them, shock them, and maybe we can dredge them up to fry or grill or whatever. But we're going to move towards making our salad. Okay. So what I want to do now, if you see, I'm, I'm going to cut off basically just the florets. Okay. So the whole stem is going to come off. Yeah, all the stems. And then when you get down to a piece that's this small, okay. right? I'm going to cut those stems off too so that it breaks up into little florets like that. Okay. I think I need my smaller knife. So what we're trying to do here is break up the cauliflower into tiny, tiny bite-sized pieces so that when you scoop your spoon into your slaw, that mm -hmm. you get a bunch of cauliflower and a bunch of broccoli and a little bit of bell pepper, maybe a little onion. So we're scrapping the stems, right? Well, we're just going to hold on to them to the side. I mean, okay. I don't like to ever throw anything out in the kitchen. Okay. So all those stems we can look for turning into a nice puree. Maybe we can cook it down. You have enough of them, you can make a nice soup. What's funny is I actually like, like in broccoli and cauliflower, I actually like the, the stem part. Not the big, thick one, but the... Yeah, the stems are good. We can grate them down and make some cauliflower rice. Yeah. It's like a lot of fun these days. People are trying to be a lot more health conscious. So who doesn't love that, right? Healthy food that tastes good. Especially if it has barbecue on it. Especially. <laughs> well, most importantly, when we're eating it next to barbecue, which maybe isn't so <laughs> That's healthy. That's right. That's know? right. I come from a dry rub type of place, you know? Yeah, I hear you, man. You got that Memphis in you, right? No. Okay, I feel like I'm not, I feel like my cauliflower doesn't look as good as yours. Okay. Well, let's see. How He's a professional. Can, <laughs> let's see how we can make them uh, look the exact same. So Let me look at your cauliflower. I'm just cutting it into little pieces. Does that look right? Looks beautiful. I can't really tell with the lighting. Hold on. Let's see. I have... Yeah, they look good, but 
let's try to get them a little bit smaller. Smaller? Okay. So how small like, should they be? Like sub an inch? So it all comes down to your preference, correct? But like, let's think about when we're eating. So here mm -hmm. I have a spoon, right? Mm -hmm. And if I scoop them up on a spoon, you see I have yeah. a whole bunch of pieces here. Right. Yours is right? Like super tiny. Yeah, because I want to put some broccoli in there and some small pepper. So you get a big spoonful of everything. The, gotcha. the smaller you, know you can make the pieces, the more likely you are to spread it out amongst the dish. So what's the difference between this, right, and just chopping it up, right? If we were to just chop it up really, really fine. So we could do that. What you're going to end up with is a lot of the, um, the stem in big uh -huh. chunks and the florets, which easily break apart, are going to become almost like a powder. So you're going to have like a ah. lot of consistency. Gotcha. So what gotcha. we don't need here, it's already kind of done for us. Like nature has done its thing. Uh -huh. We just got to trim back as much of the branch, if you will, so it's just leaves left over. Gotcha. And once you get it down close enough to that florette, it'll just break apart into the little pieces yeah. that you want it to. I see that. It's like coming apart Like yeah. the closer and closer I get. I have a very tough cauliflower. Probably need a sharper knife is what I'm guessing. Always, guys, a sharp knife is so important. You know, and we tell people in the kitchen, it's the dull knife that cuts you. Mm -hmm. You because know, it doesn't stick yeah. into the food. It yeah, slides off the food and sticks right into your finger. And you got to force it. Yeah, you're forcing it with so much pressure. <laughs> that it's just going to cut right in you. I've a lot of knives here, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Nicolette. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at it. She's like Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> <laughs> I hide these from my husband. These are my weapons. <laughs> Don't tell him. He's like, know about my secret collection. This is my secret stash of knives. <laughs> Actually, you know what? This knife is pretty good. You're right. You're right. Now, now we can cheat this. You know, we can just take out a box grater and just grate this against a box grater the same way you would like cauliflower rice. Oh, no, I'm, I'm way too yeah. into this now. But, but we're... <laughs> You're not going to be able to control that size that you want, that, that I can get with just right. using my hands to cut them, which is that I, I, I like to keep them resembling of a little tree, if you will. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting, too, because I, I have this discussion with my girlfriend all the time. She likes to cut all the pieces of food, like, super tiny, you know, and I'm like, yeah, no, it could be a little bit bigger, you know, and, and does it change the way things taste when things are diced up more than when they're bigger? Well, um, taste can be really funny that way mm -hmm. because the way that we treat things, like if I, the texture, for instance, is going to, is going to change the way something tastes to you. Right. You know? Um, so if it's like super mushy or even undercooked, especially with vegetables, they, they taste differently. And the size that we cut things is going to, um, determine how it cooks. Gotcha. Right? So, so for instance, if we just cook this whole cauliflower in its, in its largest form, <laughs> going to take mm -hmm. a very long time because it's very dense and we're going to have to figure out a way to get fl uh, flavor on the inside. Right. Like I was saying, I pour things inside of it. Right. So uh, and is it like, is it like, uh, is it like if you want to change the consistency when you're cooking something that's bigger, is it just cook it slower and longer like barbecue? Does it well, sort sure, of yeah. The lower, the, um, the tougher a meat is, you can definitely cook it low and slow and sort of make it tender. Well, there's other cuts of meats or vegetables that tend to a faster cooking mm -hmm. because of the marbling or the fat or how much um, fat is stored in its cells if it's a plant, right. like an avocado. Uh -huh. I think, I well, we're not cooking this. We're I not know. cooking this, uh, this cauliflower, so we want it real it's, tiny. I think I'm pretty done. It has that it's look. pretty easy. good, yeah. So we're just trying to get about two cups. Oh, man. I definitely think I got more than that. Should I measure out two cups? Well, you don't have to measure it out. We just want to have the same amount of broccoli and cauliflower. Okay. I definitely don't have two cups. So I have a cup. Hold the on. whole measuring of recipes, that's for the birds. That's what I say. I'm with you on that. They're just guidelines. They're not rules. Yeah. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. 
Forget them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get it, I, said, right? I said I suck at baking because I act. You yeah. actually have to follow directions. We're, we're, we're the same way. We're all the same way. We we sort of like just like going. Okay, the consistency is right. It feels right, or it tastes right, or. Yeah. Whatever it is, like forget about what it says. Like if it says yeah, exactly, uh, it just comes down to confidence. Like if I asked you to make me a grilled cheese, I okay. gave you a recipe, you'd be like, "Hook to that recipe, man." <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know what's going on? Exactly. So should we start cutting up the broccoli? If you're ready to move on, let's go ahead. Let's leave the covered Brian, Jesus. Well, I'm done. I don't know if I can make it any smaller without it. Like it's pretty tiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, it, and 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 to answer your question further, when uh -huh. it comes down to how you're going to decide what you want to cut something up as, you just got to think of that end dish, you right. know? What does it look like? What is it so, going to feel like in your mouth? Now, with, with the broccoli, we're doing the same thing. We're cutting it down to just the florets on the top. Yeah, exactly. You, and let's make our bro broccoli the same size as the cauliflower, and they can even resemble each other. I mean, they already kind of look like one another yeah cooking things like this like um i'm gonna take this cauliflower tonight i'm gonna make like three or four different dishes Hold on. i'm gonna take a picture of my area here just so we have, everybody can see during the video okay. <laughs> just do you want to do it i'll take a picture of mine too we can do a side by side <laughs> Okay, now now all three of us are doing it. What they look like at, at, at various parts of the class. I like that. All right, I actually. Use my hands. I really think this knife is limiting me. Hold She's on. like, I'm gonna cut the you can oh. definitely use your hands. Once you have it once you have that stem cut down and it's just the florets, you can break them apart pretty easy with enough force. We order out a lot in this house. I'm just letting you know. Really? Why? <laughs> so you get a cook. The big thing is just building your pantry. You know? Yeah. It, you got to make sure you have condiments and, and accoutrement in your house and pickled products, stuff like that, so you can just real quick. And you got to be creative, right? Right, Chef Joshua? You gotta I, think, be I think I'm creative for you. So you don't have to be creative at home. You have plenty yeah. of stuff out there already doing it. You can just follow suit. Do you, do you hear my puppy? I think he's attacking a piece of broccoli that fell. Help. <laughs> so with the broccoli, we're doing the same thing. I just cut, cut this stem off. For us fall down. Okay, I've made an executive decision that I'm going to move on to broccoli because I don't love cauliflower that much anyway. So we'll just <laughs> no, no, no. You definitely want equal portions of the two. Uh, all right. So just make less broccoli, Nicola. There you go. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> broccoli is going to be way easier. You're going to be like, oh man. Yeah, it, it definitely is easier to cut. Okay. And it falls apart quicker, it seems. But here's my broccoli. So where am I? Where am I cutting once I'm on the bro? Once I have so a little see bite. like the um like let's call that piece of broccoli a tree, right? You see that little trunk? Let's, oh, let's cut the trunk down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut it off. Like a mushroom, almost like getting out the mushroom. Well, yeah, I mean, so here's one, right? This is a bigger version of the one you're holding. Uh huh. Right. You can just cut it in half if you want, like that. And then you see how that, that runs all the way down, and I'm just going to yeah. cut the okay. trunk out. So I just cut this part out. Oh, my gosh. Oh, see, I'm angling in. Like, I feel like if I angle in and I cut out that center. Like, exactly. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got it. I mean, there's a there's a bunch of ways to skin a cat, guys. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any pets? I do. My, I have a dog. I do, too, but he's not here. I don't know, but I don't, I don't, I don't condone the skinning dogs. But we no. can <laughs> me either. <laughs> Cookie, no, my now she heard dog. And she was coming. Uh, so okay, so what's the okay? So now speaking about that, what's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten, Chef Joshua? Ooh, 
I mean, I guess weird is always um, it's all relative, right? <laughs> yeah, these days you're gonna offend somebody if you say that's weird. How dare you? Uh, but um, I I, uh, I like to travel around and, and do a lot of different foods. So in Filipino culture, hi. In Filipino culture, they do something called balut. Okay. Which is a uh, an egg that is usually uh, buried in the ground and, and cooked over a long period of time. Uh-huh. Uh, you use an egg that has been has already started to become a chicken, if you will. So it has like a tiny embryo in it. Oh yeah, yeah. Like um, think of like a soft shell crab. The bones uh-huh. are malleable and the feathers aren't quite produced, so you can eat the whole thing. So it's basically just like a hard boiled chicken egg. Right, right. Like a week old chicken in it, and uh, it was delicious. It tastes like chicken noodle soup. Tastes really good. Uh-huh. Went back for seconds. It's good. Had um, duck web. It's another one. Um, what? what? Duck, what? duck web? Duck web, like in there. Yeah. Oh, the, you oh can like, oh. I've had, I've had chicken feet. Yeah, chicken feet. Alligator. It's another good oh, one. I love, I love alligator, but that's that's the Creole. That's the Cajun. That's what yeah. it's coming in, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've had, um, let's see, I've had ostrich, which I think is probably my favorite. Oh, okay. The exotic meats. I had I had a thousand year old egg or whatever they called it or a hundred year old egg the yeah. green one I've had that before I think oh, one of the weird things, I think one of the weirdest things I ever ate was um, donkey meat was sort of interesting and it was like um, it was like I don't even know it was almost like it was almost like beef, it was almost like beef jerky but it no that's not my dog that's not that that's mine I'm so sorry it's okay no, no I thought it was I thought it was Brian's actually. Yeah, I have, I have, I have like a dog rescue over here, uh, Chef Joshua. I oh, got, that's great! <laughs> I got like all these rescues. That, well, uh, actually, that actually reminds me. So, do you ever cook for your dog? Oh, yeah, we do. We make um, dog food for our dog. She eats very well. I do too. I. What's your What's your, what's her favorite? Yeah. Um. Well, her favorite is always like the cheeseburger. <laughs> we make her, you know, and we'll splurge and make her sort of like plays on food that we'll eat, like a cheeseburger, because uh-huh. she likes to have a little bit of cheese and beef is like her favorite, but she doesn't eat it a lot. Our go-to for her is chicken, uh-huh. mostly. Um, chicken and vegetables, sweet potato, sweet potato, brown rice. Okay, that's that's similar. I cook I cook for my dogs too. I just believe it's just much healthier for well, them. Here's here's yeah. my question because so we always gave the dogs like just straight up chicken you know like ground chicken and cook it but it's okay. not very flavorful what kind of what can you add to a dog recipe to make it taste better that's healthy well, dogs see flavor like a lot differently than we do okay mm-hmm. right and there's certain things like they can eat so i would just recommend finding other foods that your dog likes and mixing them in okay mm-hmm. Uh, things that are good for your dog as well um, right and in certain portions like they're gonna love strawberries maybe and stuff like that but you don't want to put a lot in right, right. Like, like i always make i always mix like vegetables in like peas carrots you know yeah uh, broccoli my dog loves broccoli for some broccoli reason broccoli is always like a big one yep. yeah yep and uh i always mix that in when i cook it like i make um the one dog the older dog i make her like a lot of stews you know like chunks of meat you know with uh yeah. you know just whatever you know, um, vegetables in there because that's what she she yeah. likes. And they so. like that gravy sometimes. It's like oh. another. Yeah, I swear. Yeah, and it's like one of the. I, I feel like too. She's a better hydrated when I make her like a stew. Like she doesn't. Th- this dog doesn't drink a whole lot. She'll drink if she's really like outside playing. But other than that, she's pretty. You know, so I try to give her a lot of like you said the gravy in it. Yeah. yeah. You know what's crazy? I don't cook for my family, but I really enjoy cooking for the dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? I cook for her every day. I do. Every day. Just the dog doesn't complain about what you're giving it. <laughs> He's so grateful when he eats. I'm like, I, get it. Yeah, I feel like so a chef. It. You know, I feel you're so like I can cook for the dog, but what do humans eat? <laughs> right. That's right. So, so I got my broccoli. I think my broccoli is good. And yeah, they're great. So I just like threw mine in a bowl here. So it's like okay. half and half together. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So put one to one side, one to the other. Well, I mean, I just did that for you. No. <laughs> it doesn't have to be one. I'm, I'm gonna try to make mine fancy like yours. All right, get fancy with it. That's what I'm. <laughs> and then next, we're gonna cut up this pepper, right? 
And this is going to be super easy. Nicolette, are you okay? How are you doing over there? <laughs> She's still in the cauliflower. Oh, yeah. What's up? <laughs> No, it's I, okay. My bra it's okay if you feel a little behind. All right. All right. How's that look? How's that look? Oh, that looks great. That looks great. This is a dish dish best eaten the next day. So okay. You know. Well, I already told my daughters when they get home from school that uh, they're gonna have to test it out. So no, yeah, they, you can try, but you're gonna see like tomorrow the textures. Oh, are be perfect. Okay. Like, the 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 acid and the vinegar will start eating at the vegetables, and the salt will pull out moisture. Is it kind of like pasta salad and chicken salad? Because I always feel like those Marinate, two yeah. are really good the next day. Yeah, exactly. All that stuff, like like regular coleslaw, even. Yeah. You know, if you make it right away, everything's a little still raw. You know, you got to chew through it. Okay. So right. what are we what are we cutting up next? Bell pepper, right? We're gonna go in here. So just make sure we wash it real well, right? We're gonna wash everything real well. I did it. Look. I'm so excited. <laughs> you know, you know, you're getting all these pictures that we're taking, right? Right after this. Yeah, oh, this is great. No, I love it. I actually, <laughs> no, it actually is on both sides, like you guys. I did it. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Let's it up higher. Let's it up higher. Yeah. I didn't even know nice. you had the broccoli done. That's yeah, so yeah, nice. yeah. I'm. Su I'll surprise you. Ready? You keep going. So, <laughs> so the red bell pepper kind of grows in like a square, uh -huh. right? So we're gonna start by just cutting. I'll, I'll pull this down here. We're just going to cut the walls off this guy. I'm going to oh. wash my pepper. Right? Okay. Yeah, wash it. We're just going to cut the walls off this guy. Another, right another plant that grows in the, from the ground. We're going to have this apple core. Or, I mean, apple. This, this, <laughs> this pepper core, which, I mean, we can now, you can throw away or you can harvest these seeds. Mm -hmm. You're not getting that time. I, I always it's I'm a weirdo. I always save like apple seeds and seeds of everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so um, I mine didn't do too well. I got this inner whatever part of the core. Should I cut that out? Yeah. So next, what I'm going to do, if you see here, I'm just cutting these ribs out. Okay. You know. Oh, ribs. Great, you know the ribs. That's that. I mean, actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. That's what I call them. Oh, should I, should I rinse? Oops, sorry. No, go ahead. That's my. Oh, point. I was gonna say, should I rinse the extra seeds off it? That um, yeah, sometimes there's little seeds that. Sort well, of let's just like kind of knock them on the board like this. Okay. And they'll fall off because you know if we're gonna pour water on this, we're gonna we're gonna start removing some of the natural oil. Gotcha. And that's okay. our flavor. So just tap it. We've already cleaned them on the outside. Okay. And they got clean innards. Them ribs are yeah, good. Clean them innards out. <laughs> like in finished form. So now what we have are four um, flat pieces of pepper. Okay. Right? Yep. Yes, sir. It's super easy to cut. So then we'll go into like our first cut, which is a julienne. So matchsticks. Right? Okay. We want them... We want the thickness to be equivalent to the size of cauliflower and broccoli that we cut. Okay. And we're going to do all four sides that way? Well, let's see how much pepper we need, right? Because it's all about how much um, broccoli and cauliflower we did. It looks like, Nicolette, like you did a little less because you wanted to catch up. So you might need to do a little less pepper as well. I think he, I think he meant I'm winning, Nicolette. I, I the contract that you need the most. It wasn't. It was the best. <laughs> I'm just messing around. So, so go to the and second. You're still one. in the race. I know. I'm very competitive. It's just my nature. So is she though. <laughs> well, that's the competitive way, right? You when you're up in the lead, you got to make sure that. That's right. Not only you stay in the lead emotionally and physically. You that's right. You got to taunt them, taunt them a little bit. Taunt them, get in the head. <laughs> <laughs> Get in their head. Yeah. There you go. How do we feel about this thickness? Oh, that's great. That's great. And you know, it's just gonna match like your other pieces that you that you can put up to it. So like I have a piece of cauliflower here. It just kind of matches the the thickness. And then I just take a bunch of them, little Julianne matchsticks, and now we're gonna do a small dice. So again, the same size as our cauliflower and broccoli. 
Okay. Here we go. Easy peasy, right? Okay, now if you weren't showing us how to do this, how long does this actually take? <laughs> how long does it take me to make this? You. Um, I don't know, probably like eight to ten minutes. Okay. Kind of wake this guy up. It's just a small one though. Should I put this in my bowl as well? Yes. So once we have the pepper that you'd like. We're going to put it in the bowl here. So how much should I put in there? I cut all mine up. Let's talk ratio, right? So if we have like um, an equal amount of cauliflower and an equal amount of broccoli, uh -huh. let's say you put maybe three quarters amount of bell pepper. Okay. Do you have a pretty way to put that in the bowl too? I mean, you can just kind of throw it in. All right. Okay. So about three quarters. Yeah. So if we did two cups of the broccoli and two cups of the cauliflower, we can say about a cup to a cup and a half of. Uh, oh. Okay. Of the red bell pepper. I had a little bit extra. I'll just hold to the side. We'll put that up later. All right. Okay. I'll be making some soup. I know. So now it's time to just make a dressing for these guys. So I have some mayonnaise here. It's kind of the base. Into the bowl. So I put a half a cup of mayo in this bowl right here. Mayo. Okay, you said half a cup of mayo? Yeah, I said half a cup of mayo. And we'll make the dressing and we'll just add as much dressing as we need to this. Okay. Would, I, would it be, okay, I'm going to use the mayo and do what you say, but... Imagine we did something different with mayo racha and made like a, I don't know. I have this mayo with sriracha sauce in it. You can use that. You can use that. We can add stuff to this. This is a super basic recipe. So I also have a little uh, ghost pepper aioli here. But do you think the sriracha would go well with the vinegar? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Because yeah, we already that sriracha. Okay, let's do it. That's good. I mean, if you want to win this competition, you're going to have to, you know, throw some curveballs. That's right. That's all I've got going for me, so I might as well. <laughs> She's the curveballs. <laughs> yeah. So let's throw, like, around, like, you don't have to measure it. You just, like, uh, throw, like, a half a cup in there. It's okay that you got it in there. It's all right, bud. Yeah, I just, I just put That's it in there. It's all good. Yeah, Usually, I, I just mix it all in the same bowl, but. Okay, now what? Uh, let's do a little bit of um, apple cider vinegar. So I'm going to say, say about a tablespoon. Tablespoon. This up. Okay. Okay, we're going to say, let's say a tablespoon of sugar. Tablespoon of sugar. We might need more, but we might need, this might be just right. We don't, we can always add more. You know, to take it away. Let's say about a tablespoon of salt, kosher salt. Kosher salt. Reiterate. What kind of salt do we have out there? Kosher salt. Great. Some Got flake some. kosher salt. What do you have, Nicolette? I have no idea. You have, you're lucky I have salt. Um, no, I have regular salt. Like iodized salt? Uh, the salt I put on. Table I, salt. Well, yes. Okay. So that's some dangerous stuff you got there. So yeah, like a teaspoon maybe. Okay. And let's work into getting like like kosher salt or sea salt in the future for you at your house. Okay. Not that iodized stuff. You don't need iodine anymore. 
Okay, so we should be mixing this as we go. Yeah, let's just kind of mix it up. Any nice sugar? Hold on. Sugar. Some, uh, some black pepper in here. Black pepper. How much black pepper? I love pepper. Uh, just a little bit, maybe. I, I mean, I do fresh cracked, so like a oh, okay, like a quarter teaspoon. I don't have to measure. I can just do. Yeah, there you go. I like pepper. Okay, great. And then we're just going to dress our salad. So we're going to put it on the salad? We're going to put it on the salad. Just kind of stir it all around. Oh, what happened to the onion? Well, that was off the recipe, so that's where I get into our next part here. Ah. We have our salad kind of done, and then we can add in what we want to make it unique for us. Because, I mean, cooking your food here, you know? But I already see the basis of the salad is beautiful. It looks, it looks pretty good. Look at this. Green, red. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Did you bring this out at a barbecue? People go, oh, man, that's something new. Unique. I want to try that. Okay. Yeah. I'm very. So, yes, this is where we're going to get into adding a couple components. Oh, okay. I got my onion. So I have a sweet onion here. Me too. And I'm going to add half of this. Half of the onion? Yeah. <laughs> Say probably about like a cup of onion, a cup and a quarter. Keep the root of the onion on, and I just cut the top off. Okay. Keep that root connected. Okay. Just cut the top, and then I cut uh -huh. it in half. Peel the skin off. So you'll see that my root is still connected there at the bottom. That's going to keep my onion together. Okay. Now with my half onion, I'll bring my camera down a little lower here. I'm going to start just maybe a quarter inch from the cutting board up, but I'm not going to cut all the way through the onion. I'm going to stop once I hit that root. And then I'm going to move up another quarter inch and cut across, but not all the way through. Move up another quarter inch and across, keeping the onion intact. I do that about three or four times. Okay. So you'll see here, I still have my onions all together. It's still one piece, right? Now me, I'm not going to use as much onion. That's okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing vertically in the middle here. I'm not going to cut all the way through. But just every quarter inch and move over and cut down so my onion's still intact. Yeah, I think mine came apart. I'd have a I'd have a whole onion to start with. Okay. And that's the trick there. Now once it's all intact, I do those side cuts and every slice is diced onion. Oh, I see. Uh, I'm reverse I'm reverse engineering this. Going the other way now. Yeah, there you go. There's no right or wrong way to cut your onion. There's just a quicker way. That's all. Mm -hmm. So now I love sweet onion. Is there? Is there? You know, there's a ton of different types of onions out there, right? Yeah, so there's a bunch of onions. Right. Is is sweet on like sweet onions, are they the best to cook things like this, like salads? Always use like sweet yeah, onions. I mean a Vidalia onion, right, which is like the king of sweet onions, is honestly the best uh -huh. for salads. I mean, next to maybe a red onion. So right. That depends on how much bite you want. That onion, how sharp you want it to be. With the, the Vidalia being the least sharp. You know, but they all all onions have a lot of sugar and a lot of pectin in them. So mm. You cook them long enough, they'll get sweet. Yep. Okay. So so now, damn up. Is the onion going in the bowl? Yeah, let's mix that onion in there. 
So just for example, other things I have in my refrigerator, which I don't want to add, but just wondering, I have scallions, I have celery, I have mm -hmm. carrots, any of those. Yeah. Let's put, you can put that celery in there. You can put those carrots in there. You can put yeah. that, uh, you can put everything in here. That's all, that's all doable. And that could be your version. Hmm. I have this little spicy aioli I'm going to mix in here. That's like unbelievably spicy. So a little dab will do you. Do you have that sriracha? You want to add that in? That's great. I already did. It was a sriracha mayo, so it was perfect. Wonderful. And then we have, um, if you have any like dry, you want to add dry stuff. Maybe a little smoked paprika. Maybe a little chili flake. Maybe a little paprika. Why yeah. not? Maybe a little onion powder, garlic powder. Add just a little bit, stir it up, and taste it. I have cayenne pepper. No? Cayenne pepper? I mean, it's a little spicy. Yeah. Some onion powder. Oh, man. This is already really good. I kind of like it the way it is. Um, oh, then that's great. If you like it how it tastes, keep it there. Yeah, I'm going to stop here. I now... Taste. When you taste it, remember, you're going to get a little bit of vegetal taste from the raw cauliflower and raw broccoli that will be gone tomorrow. Really? Yeah, the acid is going to start eating and the sugar is going to start eating at the um, at the vegetables, breaking them down a little bit more, giving them more of a um, um, texture. You're looking for it to be tangy, a little sweet, a little salty. The perfect bright side for, let's say, some ribs mm -hmm. or some brisket. Talking about, talking about food there. Oh, man, that's good. How are we going? Tastes pretty good. Tastes pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. And you can add to this, too, if you want to add fruit. You can add up, like, cut up apple or pear to this. Well, that's a good idea. You know, we can do nuts, seeds. I'm, you can okay. do all sorts of stuff. You can get really creative with it and make it different every time. Brian, let me see yours. Oh, that looks good. That looks great, guys. Perfect. They look like they're all the same thing. Yeah. Hmm. Tastes pretty good. I'm, I don't know. I may have to eat this whole thing. Yeah, so. man, I love man. I love this side. It's such a fun thing to bring to barbecues and cookouts because you you can, you know that nobody else is going to make it. Yeah. Somebody else might have a coleslaw, and yours is going to stand out. They're going to be like, <laughs> my coleslaw is better than your coleslaw. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. I got paprika. My coleslaw. <laughs> this sriracha mayo came in. I know. I sort of like that idea. Oh, that sounds great. And I mean, guys. Uh -huh. You got to like just have a bunch of cool things in your pantry to make your food better. So you have the sriracha mayo. Sometimes you got to test some stuff. You know, and a little barbecue sauce next to it. You know, sometimes the rib, you, know, you got to make sure what stands. That's so, right. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. I just put it on the spoon with it. Let me ask you a question. What would you say are like five things that people don't usually have in their kitchen as a staple, but maybe you should have? Okay, that's a great that's question. So, I want to give you so many more than five. Okay, I thought five was, was too much, so go ahead, go for no, it. No, no. Um, so salt. Let's start there, like with the salt, right? First and foremost, like, and if you can, if you can find some other salt, like try them next to each other. Try sea salt or kosher salt, taste it, and then try that iodized stuff. What about like the Himalayan sea salt? What about the Himalayan salt? That's great. Yeah, yeah. What you what we just don't want is the iodine. You don't mm -hmm. want to have that chemical in your food. You don't need that anymore. How do you know if your salt has iodine? It's It'll iodine. say it on there. It'll say iodized or non-iodized. Another big thing there is the size of the granules. When you have like a fine grind, you know, there's going to be a lot more salt. There's no negative space, like when you're using a flake sea salt. So some other kitchen staples that I think you must have. Um, miso. Oh, I have miso. Miso powder. 
You can have miso powder. I get miso paste. There's uh -huh. white. Yeah. Um, white miso or yellow miso. I like this. You can get red miso. You can get miso made out of all sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. It's pure umami. It tastes delicious. Mm -hmm. It just looks like this, a little paste. Right, right. So good. You know, I'm, I'm digging it with the barbecue sauce. I'm just saying. Oh. <laughs> miso is almost like like Parmesan cheese if it was a paste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like eating Parmesan, you'll love miso. That's umami. Another one's gochujang. So it's another Korean ingredient. It's a fermented chili paste. Oh. Okay. I like that. I mean, this should be this is in everything. Everything we cook with peppers in it. I make I make chili, I make rubs, all that. Delicious. Um, know how to pickle things. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's just sugar, water, and vinegar. And I do we do pickled red onions all the time here at the house. Pickled jalapenos all the time at the house. We put them on everything. So if it's like taco night, mm -hmm. just real quick make some taco filling. We have tortillas. We have a bunch of pickled stuff. Oh, tacos man. in 15 minutes. Uh, okay, I have a question. I've tried to pickle ginger. Yeah. And it just never tastes quite right. I feel like I can never get it like thin enough. Okay. You know, are you trying to, to make like the pickled ginger like you get with sushi? Yeah, sort of like that sort of sushi grade. Like mine's always like too thick, no matter how thin I try to slice it. What are you using to slice it? Uh, probably this. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that just comes out. You just need to I be mean, better. Probably like a smaller version, but yeah. You know, um, the sharpest knife possible if you're going to do it by hand. But okay. I would recommend just using a microplane, which is okay. what which is what they're using. Like one of those things that go. Shh, shh, shh. Yep. Yeah, for sure. You can use a spoon to grate, to um, skin it, to take the skin off of the mm -hmm. ginger so that you don't take too much off with like a right. peeler. Uh -huh. I have as much of it, just right on that microplane, get it as thin as possible. Because when you pickle ginger, you definitely don't want a big, thick crunch. Right. You know, exactly. You I feel like it takes longer. <laughs> you can well, even use, so... For instance, I have here, I pickled some carrots last night. I got some heirloom carrots. Uh -huh. And all I did to make them this thin, and I just want to check them, but I think this would work for you. Yeah, is just your, your um, do you have a peeler? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just use the peeler to peel them. So you see how thin that is? Yep, yep. That was just with my vegetable peeler. Ah, uh, Okay. So yeah, I always get like all, you know, I'll just use a knife to peel, which I know I should use a peeler. I mean, we have one. I just never, <laughs> you know, you know, it's funny. Nicolette and I are just sitting here eating this stuff. If you've noticed. I'm with you right now. I'm just like, I, so I'm in this new, like post COVID world. Uh -huh. It has kind of been a blessing. I, I'm not, I'm not in the kitchen all day. I'm not mm -hmm. like 16 hours deep standing up on my feet in a hot kitchen like away from home mm -hmm. like i've been home which is nice i get to cook from home so That's like awesome. you know i want more people to like get to do this it's a, it's a lot of fun you know we can all learn how to cook and maybe mm -hmm. find like a new way, way where i'm not giving up my nights and weekends right. and holidays and my relationships and yeah. all my spare time to like a, a building mm -hmm. i want to have kids and like be around for their first words or their first steps. See things like be a parent, be a husband. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be that and a chef. It's really hard. Yeah, right. it's, it's hard. My dad was in the restaurant and bar industry, and I felt like, you know, when we were kids, he worked like 24-7, you know. Yeah, it's, and, and it's easy to get resentful against somebody that's like, hey, don't you yeah. want to be there for me and my baseball mm -hmm. game? You know, it's like yeah. being there in uh, a restaurant because – Somebody mm -hmm. called out. <laughs> Somebody yeah, no, it's, it's true. It's true. You know, I'll tell you a funny story. So, you know, my dad, I, I was a wrestler. You know, my dad was never at any of like my, you know, tournaments or anything, right? And um, it was funny. So I thought, not that he didn't care, but I knew he was busy with work. You know, he's trying to support all of us. And then one day I went into his office and on the back wall was like all the clips of all the wrestling matches I won. He had posted them up. So it was pretty cool. So he That's was adorable. Yeah, he was there. You know, he wasn't able to make it because he was working. You know, so I could wrestle. You know what I mean? Like he was giving yeah. up his time so I could do what I love. But he was looking at all the clips. He had all the clips from like every newspaper. And that's an odd circumstance that I would say ninety nine percent of people don't get. 
yeah. to stumble upon somebody that loves them from afar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You go your entire life with never knowing it and maybe yeah. even like not liking the person because of it. I yeah. think that could have been a very sad story. Yeah. Exactly. I was just at, I was at his, you know, I was at his, you know, at his restaurant one day and I went into his office, which I barely ever did. And I was like, where are all these newspaper clips? And I realized they were me, which was. Yeah, yeah. And this poor man, you know what I mean? Had to give up his entire life to try to give you a future. You know exactly. I mean? I That's, that's so much to ask for so many people. And yep. I don't know how old your father is now, but what's the restaurant doing for him now? Yeah. He passed away quite a long time ago. He passed away so when I was young, but it was, it was nice to have that memory, you know? You know, but that's the biggest thing is like that restaurant's not speaking their memory. You yeah. Are. So like yeah. that's where you want to invest your time. It's you know? Exactly. So, exactly. That's something. You know, on, on that note, I want to say this is probably a great day for us because it's the first time we've actually eaten lunch in a long <laughs> time, Brian. So <laughs> I, I'm very happy for us. <laughs> no, that's great. I'm happy for you too. You know, <laughs> you know what? I'm actually even going to be nice and save this for Justin when he gets home. Because um, even though I was going to finish it, and please... The sriracha mayo really has a nice kick, and I, uh, I encourage uh, everybody watching to use sriracha mayo. That's I don't know. I'm 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 digging the sweet bubble <laughs> rays. <laughs> okay, are we plugging the stuff? Baby <laughs> <Let's turn it. laughs> Is sweet baby rays a sponsor? Because if not, they need to be. <laughs> well, it's actually like really good. Like put barbecue sauce in this. It's actually oh, like really really good. Good. <laughs> we don't care whose barbecue sauce it is. All right, <laughs> don't have to be a sweet baby, right? Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> make your own barbecue sauce. Get Sasha will help you make some barbecue sauce for this thing. Oh man! Well, this was so much fun. What else? Oh wait, you didn't finish telling us what to keep in the house. Okay, so we had miso. Yeah. We had uh, we had three. So you gotta have miso. Right? Yeah. I think gochi chang is a great as a as a gochi chang is a great ingredient that you probably don't know about. Um, keeping pickled things in house, like pickled things or condiments. It's not just pickled cucumbers. Onions are like the biggest, I think. Onions, mm -hmm. love jalapenos in this house. Um, we just pickled some of the cauliflower we had yesterday, which is so good, with some kimchi, which is another one. I mean, I love to have. Um, Alipo peppers. It's another mm -hmm. great, great ingredient. It's a Middle Eastern pepper, mm -hmm. and uh, it has the perfect amount of spice that's like a middle spice. It's not immediately spicy, and it doesn't right. linger too long. But it, it, it fills up that middle area. Of, uh, that's, oh, man, it's so good. What Can you repeat that? What is that called? Oh, I'll grab some. It's called Alipo. A-L. A-L-P or A-L-E-P-P-O. Okay. We'll definitely put it in the description. Yeah. yeah. Alipo. It's a place, and uh, they got peppers. Really good ones. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean – it's all about just having a pantry and the more items you have on it, the more availability you have and the more <laughs> variables, you know, the more things you can make. That is awesome. And, and you, you're, you're teaching a, a few, you're doing a few events. Well, more than a few, right. For, for Jerry Dari. What do you, what do you've got? What do you have going on? Yeah, there? I mean, I have a bunch of things on there. Um, <laughs> right now it's a lot of spillover from last year, some Italian food, some soul food, stuff like that to get you through the winter. But you're going to be seeing a lot of barbecue popping up in these next few uh, weeks. I mean, With the weather getting nicer. I mean, the snow's melted. So I was outside yesterday. <laughs> we had the pit going. Um, I, I made some mayataki steaks. So I turned mushrooms into little beef steaks. It's, mm -hmm. you know, again, got to get creative out there with these vegetarians. <laughs> Yeah. It, it's funny. I have, pictures, I have pictures of me smoking, you know, because I have a smoker out back, but it's like pouring rain. I'm out there smoking. I don't care. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could show you the delivery guy just dropped off a brand new master built smoker. I bought. Uh, that's what I use master built. I love master built smoker. Yeah. So I'm yeah. itching to even get it started. And I just got my hands on a, a, a Wagyu brisket that I really oh, nice. smoke and make some stuff. And I'll be doing a pop up soon. So. Nice. Like uh, everyone that. needs to watch that one. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be filming a bunch of it. And I mean, if you're in the greater Philadelphia area, you hit me up. You know, uh, we're 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 in New York. We're not that far. Oh, well, so. that's pretty easy. You know, I can do it. I do bespoke catering. I, I'll awesome. bring you guys some barbecue. Awesome. 
Well, I think this was a great experience and, and a great way to show everybody that it's still fun to cook with other people virtually. I mean, we had a lot of fun. And I think that that, you know, I think for me has been the biggest hurdle of virtual is that I feel like it's it, you're losing something. And this was a great way to show like you're not <laughs> you're you're not you're you're there. And, and, and it's really it's a really cool experience. So thank you so much for joining us. And we're going to put Chef Joshua's link, um, his profile link, and, and you can check out everything he's doing over there at Deary Dari and, and any thing that he mentioned that I can't pronounce, I will um, <laughs> as well. <laughs> oh man, guys, thank you so much. This was such a blast. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I love cooking with people. So it's just another great day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Chef thank Shop. you again. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, who won, by the way? I just, oh. you know, not to put you on the spot or anything. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I, I, ate mean, most, I ate most of mine. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to say who won because I'm not eating you can't it. can't taste it. But I'll say they both look delicious. But the fact that yours is gone, Nicolette, I mean, <laughs> the, the judges ate it up. You know? <laughs> All right. We'll give it to Nicolette with her sriracha <laughs> mayo. Okay, so I'm starving. <laughs> I know. I think this is the first time Nicolette and I have eaten lunch together in like a, a year, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was eating great. the ingredients as we were cutting them Thank you, Chef Josh. It feels even like we cooked together, like we were in the same kitchen. It does feel great doing this kind mm -hmm. of stuff. It does. It does. Yeah, it was nice. yeah awesome. thank you again. All right, you're welcome. Thank so, you so uh, much.